Located on Mudangari Drive, the Noir Gallery is a space of artistic expression like no other in the city. And the whole concept of Noir Gallery is to have sort of an immersive space that sort of links the three aspects that we try and sort of promote here, which is food, music and art. So as you can see from where I'm seated, this is our art gallery. We try and promote local artists and that use different mediums to, to showcase their art. So here at Noir Gallery, we have a few brands um, on board with us within the space as well. Um, so Noir Gallery under us, we have the restaurant side of things and the gallery. Um, but we also host um, Wapi Seek Unique, which is a beautiful um, boutique shop that offers handmade um, different sort of products by local artisans and also other local brands. We also have Lila Bear, which is a design house, um, and they do beautiful, sustainably made um, fashion items, um, and that's owned by Li uh, Ria. And then we also have um, Signature Barber, and they have a fantastic barbershop on our top floor as well. I wanted to create a space that allowed for different narratives to come into play and this is why my focus at the gallery has been to celebrate art in all forms and I've been very particular and specific about that requirement and that criteria. Um, the reason being is because Lila Bear has a more progressive narrative and a story to tell um, and I wanted to have every single individual who's involved in this space have something to say as well. Um, this is a place that is a safe space for new thoughts, new ideas to come in, where they will be heard and listened to and appreciated no matter what they are. Um, so the reason that I came to Noir and decided to set up our home base here is exactly that, so that we could create something together um, that was bigger than all of us. The play between art and nature creates a calming and inspirational experience for any person who walks through it. During COVID times, I think it gave us all that moment to sort of sit down and actually think of like, what do we want to do with life? Where do we want to take our lives forward? And just, um, yeah, a break to sit down and come up with some creative ideas. So my business partner and I were just sort of bouncing ideas off of each other and um, we thought it would be great to have sort of an outdoor space, especially with COVID in mind, people do want to be seated outside. Um, but we wanted to bring something a bit more to the table rather than just food. So we thought an art gallery would be a perfect combination for doing that. Um, and then also the idea to have local artists, you know, because I feel like sometimes there's not such a great platform for them where they can actually be in a space where guests are always coming and having the food aspect as well means that you know, people are here for longer, so you can come and have a glass of wine while you're looking at the art or have a meal and then take a break to look at the art. So, um, yeah, it was just a perfect timing and some great artists came on board as well. It's called The Groove Garden um, and we started it just after the second lockdown, so sort of May, June there. Um, and the idea was just to use the, the garden and just take full advantage of it. And, you know, especially with COVID now, people want to be outdoors, but it's a safe environment to enjoy music and, you know, meet up with your friends, but you're outdoors and you can dance in the grass. You know, it's a little bit different to being in a club, for example. Um, so yeah, we have some great DJs on board with that. With any business, especially during a pandemic, it was a very slow start as people, it takes time for people to learn about the space, you know, hear about us and, and join us. But I think relaunching the space with the new artist in the space really pulled a great crowd of people um, and mixing all the different elements like the fashion house upstairs, Lila Bear, and all the different artists in the space and um, yeah, and just having great food and drinks to go along with that was, was um, it just makes it a much more interactive space, a very creative space where people from all walks of life can come and interact with each other um, and find a common ground in art and food and, and music. The Noir Gallery incorporates a gallery and kitchen area on the ground floor, a fashion house, a salon and a barbershop on the first floor. There are a few art galleries in Nairobi, but I think 
What makes them a little bit difficult to approach is that once you're there, that's all there is to offer, um, which in sometimes is fantastic because it means that your focus is the art. But we thought combining the two means that you know people can come to view the art, but at the same time have um, that add-on of like, okay, I can sit in the garden and you know um, maybe sit and actually talk to the artist or sit and. Um, just appreciate the art a little bit more than if it's just like, oh, I'm here for the gallery and then uh, leaving. And just giving a platform to local artists is something that we also really wanted to, to do, um, as well with our Groove Garden event, which is a music event that we have twice a month. So that's another way of pulling in local artists. So we obviously have our sort of our headliners or our artists that are slightly more established, but the goal is always to have at least one or two DJs that are maybe new in the industry or trying out the industry. So it's just giving people a platform to engage, giving you know the people that visit us and the customers that we get also just like a little bit extra rather than just a gallery on its own or just a restaurant on its own. We have several artists at the moment under our wing at Noir Gallery. I wanted to keep the selection very diverse in that we have sculpting, we have painting, we have photography. Um, one of the more established artists that we have is Gakunju Kaigua, who's been working um, from about the 70s, the 80s. Um, he's a sculptor primarily in wood, um, metal and resin. Um, he does a lot of abstract work and I find his sculptural pieces are really evocative of um, emotion, even though they're, you know, kind of seating, for example, that he does. We also have a painter, Bissy Riva, who is originally American, but she's lived here for a long time now. Um, she does a lot of abstract um, and impressionist um, painting in very vibrant and bold colors. I've always loved and admired her work. We have some amazing photographers as well, um, Priscilla Baxter. Um, we have Alyssa Thaka, who's only 19 years old at the moment. Um, so I'm really, I've really been looking to get young, emerging and undiscovered artists and combining them and pairing them with slightly more established artists in, in the Kenyan art scene. thing that we try to do is have different events you know so we'll have our music event which is the Groove Garden then we'll have like meet and greets with our artists our first one was with Bissy and that went really well because it means you can come and speak to the artist um, interact with them learn more about the background of them as an artist and also where their art comes from and their inspiration <laughs> Lila Bear creatively designs clothes from recycling and using handicrafts. Lila Bear is a slow, sustainable and ethical fashion brand. And what that means is we use recycled and handcrafted fabrics to create gender neutral and size inclusive pieces. The idea for the brand is that firstly considering the impact on every level from um, a labor perspective, from a materiality perspective, uh, to make sure that each a living entity through every piece that we make um, kind of fruition up to fruition everyone who's involved in that making is benefiting and then passing on that benefit to the customer by making something that doesn't have a gender um, doesn't have a size it actually adapts to your body so this is my creative expression but it's also um, a political message I suppose our studio is based here at Noir Gallery and when we moved in I wanted to expand um, my design and creativity into the gallery because at the time it didn't have as much art um, and that's very much my network and my world so I decided to curate um, more inspiring local artists so that we could all be in the same space together. I started with artists that I've met along my journey, people in my network, um, having seen all of the artists and met them and 
um, seen their works that really moved me is really where I started. So it's been very much a passion project, something from the heart. Um, I've taken the perspective of if it moves me and if it feels powerful um, and emotion evoking to me, then it must do for other people. In Grown Up here, I realized that culturally, a lot of the time people kind of suppress um, creativity and the arts. They've put it on the back burner or dismissed it as something that's frivolous or indulgent. I think completely the opposite. Um, everything that we interact with in the world that we find beautiful has been designed by somebody. Um, any product, any space, even a light bulb. <laughs> so down to the most basic things, those are all human ideas. And without those designers, without that kind of art and art in all forms um, in the world, then the world becomes a very mundane place. Utilizing the Noir Gallery space as a space to celebrate that and recognize art in all forms will allow people to not only see the significance of it, they can feel their mood change and um, experience joy from the space, um, but also to learn and become more educated about the kinds of art practices that are that are available in this country. There's, there's such a vast wealth of creativity in this country. So I really wanted to showcase that and have a space that feels welcoming of the new narrative that creativity is to be celebrated. The Noir Gallery space exhibits creative works from a selection of artists' work, including photography, fine art, sculpture, fashion, and crafts. But we have some great artists. Um, we have like Bissy who does um, paintings, so that's the artwork that you can see behind me. Um, and then we have Kaigua who does these beautiful um, wooden sculptures. Um, and then we have Priscilla Baxter who has actually been featured on National Geographic. One of her pieces was here when we launched the gallery. And then we've got Priyanka who does these smaller pieces that you can see on the side and behind you. Um, yeah, and then some photographers as well, like Thuo um, and Alyssa as well. So the idea is to sort of have an, a take on Kenya or a take on Africa, but in a way that's not so obvious, you know, because I, I think it can be quite easy to do quite, um, let's say, cliche art pieces, you know, that are very like, okay, this is Kenya, you know. So we're representing Kenya and Africa in general, but in a way that's a bit more artistic, a way that's a bit more fluid, um, and just a bit more creative, really. Kenya and has some fantastic artists. I mean, even just with this gallery, we get so many inquiries and so many artists sharing their work with us. Um, and I think it's, it's important to give people that chance to actually showcase their art um, and also in a way that's interactive. You know, it's not just you by yourself in a gallery on your own or people have to come to your studio. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's a great opportunity to, to showcase what Nairobi and Kenya has to offer and the, the beauty of the art that we, we have here. The idea is just to keep it very sort of, um, one, interactive, I keep pushing that <laughs> sort of, um, and then also just keeping it creative, you know, trying to keep the things fresh, coming up with new event ideas, trying to have different kind of events that people can interact with, whether it's yoga classes or whether it's painting classes, you know, just things that are a bit more interactive. Um, and then also highlighting the artists that we have, so having them come in, meet with guests, um, and then also expanding the gallery as well. So I think our next step will probably be to get in more artists um, and just to have a lot more people interacting with the space. On display are interactive pieces that are made of wood that are shaped like an armchair and a stool respectively that can be sat on. Well, obviously some pieces are a bit more delicate than others. Um, some you can interact with, like the seats and stuff. Some are a bit more delicate that, yeah, it's, it's not for touching, <laughs> but yeah. The whole sort of design that we were trying to go for is very like natural. All our furniture is like handmade from wood. Um, and the floor, I mean, we got very lucky with the floor in the gallery that it's a beautiful wooden floor, um, which actually complements a lot of the artwork that we have here. And yeah, just having our beautiful indoor garden, our beautiful outdoor garden means that, you know, nature is like the focus of the space. Um, so we didn't want to take away from that too much and more than anything, just sort of highlight it. Guests can enjoy mouth-watering flavoured meals under the trees in the garden area as they enjoy the cool breeze and music. The food here, what, what makes it so special is actually the, the produce. So it goes down to the produce and our suppliers. So from our suppliers, we get to 
have an intervals of either two to three uh, requisitions in a, day, in a week. So we keep it fresh always. Uh, we have our guys from Quickie Basket who really come through. And um, we also really pay attention to what we do. And um, I could say it's, it's all love in the food because we pay attention to each and every item. So our recipes are well thought of for sure. We also look about the sustainability in how we make the food. And um, so that also goes and trickles down to how the plating is and everything. So we really pay attention to that. And we want our guests to have an experience rather than to just come and dine. That's why our plates are really well synchronized and symphony of everything going. Um, it's a dream come true. I've always wanted to open my own restaurant since I was maybe like five years old. So um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a wonderful experience. Obviously ups and downs because of a pandemic, but it was sort of like a blessing in disguise because now you had your time off, so you had the time and energy to, to build up your own space. I do a lot of research. Then I also um, uh, practice on my skill every day and um, just attention, I just say attention and finesse is inevitable in the kitchen. So what we have on the table today is uh, our vitamin C salad. Uh, that's like um, the, we slice down the oranges, those are two types of citrus, the normal citrus orange and uh, the mandarin. It's dressed with a citrus dressing, with some goat cheese and almond flakes. That's what we have here really refreshing. Uh, it's a good salad to have um, when you're not wanting to have like a very heavy meal with some maybe wine or something. The starter which is our Hasselback. So that's just like a potato with some bacon flakes and our sour cream with, which is flavored with garlic and some other goodness. So then we could go to our pepper steak. Pepper steak, we serve it with uh, broccoli herbs. The trio of mash comes with parsnip, potato, and carrot. That's why it makes it uh, a bit yellow, so it's not sweet potato. And uh, we finish it with a pepper sauce, which is quite luscious and quite tasty. For lamb chops, which we just grill, just grilled and finished with our herb sauce, same as the mash and the uh, broccoli stems, which we blanch them and we finish them in butter and some citrus to just give it that zing and balance. And uh, finally, that's our zesty zucchini pasta where it's just the zucchini itself put down in the spiralizer. Then uh, finished off with the pesto and some garnish of cherry tomatoes and uh, a bit of parmesan on top. The garden also has a serene environment for book readers. Again, with having art being something that has been dismissed previously um, by, our, by you know, the baby boomer generation, for example, it wasn't a very big concern. Um, going back to colonial, the colonial period, a lot of local art was actually um, destroyed. So if you take, for example, the Pocoma weavers, um, all, a lot of their work, a vast majority of their work was dismissed and, and actually um, the, colonial, um, the colonialists really, they shut, they shut that, those weaving practices down saying that they were um, grotesque and um, too sexual even though they're very abstract um, works. So I think um, as a residue of, you know, um, this colonial effect as well as the fact that we as a country have had to really build our industry after independence um, and focus on you know your FMCGs and you know the big industries that really um, turn the country creativity and art was dismissed as something that was you know then put on the back burner so it's only now that we're seeing more creative space coming up um, we're finally at a place where our industries are um, running operational the country can actually take on art as something that is now intrinsic to our culture. Um, I truly believe that um, my generation are the first um, of our kind where we 
are actually defining and deciding what Kenyan art looks like, what Kenyan pop culture looks like, um, and really developing that story and that narrative. It's actually been a, a very positive and really wonderful experience. It's just, you know, taking responsibility for someone else's art is always something that is um, very serious. Um, and also, you know, you want to be respectful to the art and make sure that, you know, and especially because we do get quite busy, I think that might be the only challenge that we face is just, um, yeah, keeping the art safe and making sure that, you know, people are enjoying it, but in a, in a way that's respectful to the art. Art is very powerful and um, to be able to recognize the value of it is um, it will only happen when that's made accessible and available to as many people as possible. Um, also to introduce new narratives of what art actually is. Um, we have this, this notion that you know it has to be a painting for example. Maasai works being the primary um, kind of understanding of what that art is but there are so many artists in this country that we do very very different things um, we express differently. I express through clothing a lot of the time but I have counterparts who express through um, culture or digital art or performance art and those are the things you know those spaces the spaces that allow for that and embrace that and showcase that to people, that's really what's important right now. With regards to Noir Gallery, I think um, growth means just um, more inclusive narratives. I want it to be a space that really um, supports marginalized communities through expression and understanding um, and, through, and through that expression of, of art. Um, I think it's really important for people to feel welcome regardless of um, their, their background, their story, um, whoever it is that they are, they should feel like they have a place here. I think we're going in a great direction so far and we're slowly seeing it really build and become, you know, kind of, um, to quote your own show, a hotspot of Nairobi. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's great. and. Um, the goal is to grow the art gallery as well. We've started off with you know, a few artists, but the idea is to keep them rotating, bring in new pieces. Um, everything's on sale, so we've actually sold a few pieces, which has been great. Um, so just, yeah, constantly changing the gallery, changing the art that's coming in. Um, we might be starting a comedy night, you know, just trying to do like different events that, you know, are a bit more interactive and, um, yeah, guests can just come and have a really enjoyable experience. Obviously reservations are always recommended, um, but yeah, I mean, we're always welcome to walk-ins, especially with the gallery, there's no entrance fee, which is something we thought was very important, so people can just come in, whether it's you're coming just to enjoy the art or coming in for lunch or dinner. Um, but our Instagram is the perfect place to go if you need any information. Um, we always post our events or happy hours or any special offers that we're doing um, at the restaurant or the bar. Mm -hmm.